Good afternoon everyone, today we are covering Rust implementation of functional paradigm. First off, let's start with functions that you can chain together. Those are your typical maps, filters, so on and so on, folding, similar ideas. So whenever you've got a list or pretty much any sort of collection, you can use it as an iterator. So what do we see in here? We're creating an initial list, then we grab the iterator from it, then we transform each item by adding three to it, then we filter the values out, leaving only evens. In the end, we collect the values into a vector, into a new vector. Once this is done, we are once again using the iterator and then for each to print out the value of that particular part. What we have, however, in here is an overly complicated way of summing the values. It grabs the iterator and then runs a fold. A fold is going through each item with an accumulator between them. And exactly in here, our initial accumulator is zero. For the accumulator and for the item of that list, we just sum them up and this is our new accumulator. So another way of calculating that sum is what you can see now on the screen. However, I wanted to just show you the folds. So here it is once again, an overly complicated sum. Let's see that in action. Alright, so we started with this list, then we added three to each of the items, and then we hold on to only even items, which means all in all we've got four, six, and eight at the very end. So this is the very basic idea of functional principles. What we have next is accepting whole functions as parameters. So here we've got a public function called filter and transform. Then we accept two parameters. The first one is a function that translates integer value into a float value. The second one transforms float value into boolean. And since it's called filter, you probably can guess what it does. The whole function or the whole functionality of the function is to specify vector from 0 to 7, then to run in the map that transform. Since this is a vector of integers, it will be transformed into a vector of floats. Then we filter those floats based on this filter parameter. And then in the end we collect it as a vector. So the outcome of the function is actually a vector of floats. How does it look in practice? Here we've got the filter and transform, and then we pass along the example transform function, and also the example filter functions. So the output is... It would start with the zero, but we filtered that out. So this is how you can pass along function as parameters. Next step is interesting because in functional paradigm there is a difference between a function and a closure. The closure can close in on values outside of its body. But I've never seen closures so pronounced in a language as they are in Rust. Because in Rust, functions and closures are actually a separate entity. So whenever you want to accept closures as parameters, you have to do that a bit differently. We actually have to use generic parameters. So here it is, TNF, um, you can use whatever you like. And then we need to add the where clause where T is specified as function going from integers to floats. This was the function, this is the closure. They are different by, and I kid you not, this one letter, whether it's capital or not. If we've got capital letter, it's a closure, but if it's a lowercase letter, it's a function. The whole idea is closures can actually hold the state outside of their body. 
since closures are a bit bigger scope than just functions, you can use functions instead of closures. Whenever you are accepting closures as parameters, as it is in here, you can actually pass along functions in here. It doesn't work the other way around. And this is what I want to show you. Here we are using the filter and transform and as you can see by the definition they accept closures, the capital F, you see that, right? But I'm passing along the same thing, the same functions, the example transform and example filter, which are defined in here. As you can see, the body of the function is the exact same. I just wanted to underline those differences between closures and functions. The output that we expect is once again the exact same. And it actually is. And the next step of uh, what I want to show you is using the same function which accepts closures. But now we are passing along actual closures. And closures, they remind me of C Sharp's anonymous functions or lambdas. Let's focus on the first closure for a second. What it does, a parameter i is converted to float and then it's divided by the value of variable divided by. And value of the variable is actually 2.0. So we could do this, but I wanted to underline and show you guys that we can actually use closures to capture something outside of the body of the function or body of the closure. Functionally, this is still the same because we are still dividing by 2 and removing the 0. So, functionally, we would still see the same outcome. But what happens underneath is different and we are now actually using closures here. Cool! We got that. We've got two more things to cover, so let's take a look. To talk about functional paradigm, there's also a possibility usually to return the function from the function. In this case, we are returning a closure. And general rule of thumb here, when you are using functions as parameters or you want to return the function from the function, please use closures and this is what generally is done in Rust. What we're doing here is We've got a public function that is called return closure, which accepts an integer value i. It returns an implementation of a closure that once again accepts integer value and returns a boolean. Just so we don't focus on the move too much, this move is required because we don't want to use a borrowed value, we just want to move that borrowed value outside. Focusing on the functionality, however, so i is a parameter of this function, so whatever we will pass along in here, I think I passed along a 3 value, that 3 will be remembered in this closure. So we can read whatever will be returned as something like this. So this closure will accept one integer value and it will compare that integer value to 3. Now what we can answer with that closure is whether 3 is equal to 3 when we pass along another 3. We also can find out is 4 equal to the 3 that we passed along earlier. And this is how we do it. So let's run it. Obviously, 3 is equal to 3, but 4 is not. And one last step. Getting back to the whole functional paradigm, we also have the partial application. With partial application, what we want to achieve is a new function that accepts only one parameter and already uses 1 and 2 as those two other parameters. And we can do it this way. 
So we create a variable that is a closure. That closure accepts only one item. And then it uses the internal sum function with one and two hard coded. Then it passes along that X as a third value. So let's run it. And here it is. One, two and zero equals three. One, two and three equals six. Thank you very much guys, this has been Functional Paradigm in Rust. I hope you had some fun. See you in the next episode. And as always, we can do better as a pack. Bye.